Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to plot a particle size distribution curve using Microsoft Excel. And thereafter, I will show you how to determine the hydraulic conductivity. So this is the question. We are given uh, the result for sieve analysis test below. And we are asked to plot a grading curve and report result quantitatively. And also, we are asked to estimate the hydraulic conductivity. We have been given the average grain size coefficient as 100. The weight of the sample as 250 gram. So in the previous video, I showed you how to do the sieve test calculation. That is, I showed you how to calculate the percentage of weight retained values, the accumulated weight retained values, and the accumulated passing values. So if you don't know how to do the sift test calculation, just uh, click to the link in the description box below. There's a video there for how to do the sift test calculation. So in order to plot a particle size distribution curve, we are going to use the sieve size as the x axis and the accumulated passing as the y axis. So before we proceed, I'm going to show you what our graph is going to look like. So our graph is going to look like this. So there's a similar graph with the x axis as a logarithmic scale and the y axis as a arithmetic scale. So let's go uh, to Excel and open a new spreadsheet. So next, let's go and copy the column for the y axis and the x axis and paste it uh, here. So let's copy this column. So as you can see, I did not uh, include the pan because the cumulative passing for the pan is zero. So we're going to copy the, the column for the accumulated passing too, and uh, excluding the zero. It's not going to be included in the graph. Next, we're going to highlight the data and then go to insert. search then go to charge so uh, click on dish the insert a scatter or bubble charge so click on the little arrow uh, pointing downwards so as you can see we have uh, some options here we have this scatter with small lines and markers and also uh, scatter with uh, straight lines and markers and others. So uh, in this case, I'm going to choose a uh, scatter with smooth lines and markers. So this is it. So let's uh, expand this uh, chart a little bit so that uh, we can have a better view of it. As you can see, we have the, the y axis in arithmetic scale, but the X as is supposed to be in logarithmic scale. We're going to change this to a logarithmic scale in order to plot a semi-log graph. So in order to do that, we're going to click on any of the numbers on, along the X axis. So let's right click. And then 
go to format axis so at the right hand side of the screen this uh, format axis options are going to come up so here we have the logarithmic scale option check on this box so as you can see the arithmetic scale has been changed to a logarithmic scale but there's a problem here the y-axis has changed position it moved from the left hand side to the center of the graph so we're going to move it back to the left hand side that is the position of 0 0.1 so in order to do that we are going to click on the uh, the y-axis and uh, right click on it and then go to format axis so at the format axis options go to label let's scroll down a little bit so labels then we have here the label position so if you click on this uh, little arrow pointed down you see these uh, options here we have the next to axis we have high we have low and known so we are going to choose low so as you can see the y-axis has moved to the left hand side of the graph so next we're going to add a minor grid line to the graph let me show you uh, what I mean by minor grid lines. So as you can see, this graph here, the light green horizontal lines are the minor grid lines. So we're going to add this uh, horizontal line to the graph. So let's go back. So in order to add the minor grid lines, click on any follow along the x-axis then you'll see these uh, options will come up so choose the add minor grid lines so as you can see we have some uh, lines that uh, have appeared here but it's not that visible because the color is similar to the color of the screen so we're going to change the color. Just click on any of the minor grid lines or horizontal lines and go to the options here on the right hand side. Here we have the color. So we're going to change it from this color to light green. So as you can see, the color has changed and then the minor grid lines is now visible so as you can see the the numbers of uh, horizontal lines in the major you know grid lines is is fewer compared to what we have here so we want to increase the number of minor grid lines in the in the graph so in order to do that click on the any number along the y-axis then we're going to change this uh, here where we have units we're going to change the minor to two instead of four So, as you can see, we now have uh, many uh, minor grid lines. So next, we want to change the color of the major grid lines. So we are going to click on this and then go to Format Axis. The color is uh, white and it's not visible. So let's click on the line. Go to 
we're going to make it darker green. So click on green. So as you can see, the major grid line is now visible. So next we're going to add uh, minor grid lines to the X axis. So similarly, we're going to click on any number along the X axis. And then this option is going to come up. So choose the add minor grid lines. So as you can see, we it is not visible because of the default color is uh, white. So we're going to click on end of the line. Click on the line. So we're going to change the default color to dark green. So as you can see, it's not visible. So we now have, uh, you know, the minor grid lines and the major grid lines. So next, we are going to add our axis title and uh, give a title to the graph. So to add the axis title, go to this uh, chart elements here, click on it, and then check the box for the axis title. Click on this. So in order to save time, let's simply copy this. This uh this for the y axis, sorry. Accumulated passing. So let's paste it here. Let's we're going to copy this. So next we're going to change the, the title. Let's uh, call it gradation curve. So next I'm going to show you how to find the D values. That is D10, which is this. D10, D30, and D60. And also I'll show you how to plot it on the graph. So the D10 is simply 10% uh, of the of the cumulative passing. So as you can see, if you look at this, uh, the values for the cumulative passing, the 10% falls between 11.95 and 3.12. We're going to use those values that I have cycled 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 11.93, and 3.12 to calculate you know, the D10 value. So remember that uh, our, the shift size is the X as is. Why the accumulated passing uh, is the y axis. So the D10 value, which is 10% of uh, cumulative passing, falls between 3.12 and 11.95. And the corresponding x axis is 0.3 and 0.5. So we're going to use these values that I have cycled to find the the D10 value. So remember that uh, this is our x axis, and this is our y axis. We're going to use those four values to find the 10. So in order to do that. We are going to type in here equal trend 
So as you can see, we have these options here. So we're going to use a trend function or trend command to find the D10 value. Choose the trend function. Let's close bracket. So inside the bracket, we are going to select the sieve size column, which is dash, dash. Then we're going to type in comma. Then next, we're going to select dash and then type in comma. And then because we want to find 10% of each, we're going to type in 10. So hit the enter button. So as you can see, this is the D10 value. Similarly, we're going to find the theta value by doing the same thing. So, because 30% of the cumulative passing falls between 24.94 and 45.72. So, we're going to use this values to find D30 because 30% is between 45 and 24, and the corresponding X value is 1 and uh, 0.71. In order to find it, we are going to type in, so the equal to, uh, then trend. So let's choose the trend function. Then close bracket. So in between the bracket, we are going to select the values for X, thereafter for Y. Select selected, comma, then select for the values for Y, which is 45 and 71, comma. So because we want to find 30% uh, of it, we are going to type in 30, and then hit the enter button. So this is the, the D30 value. So next, we're going to do the same thing for, for D60. equals trend close bracket so the 60 percent in the the cumulative passing force between 45.72 and 71.17 and the corresponding x values are 1 and 1.4 so, so we are going to use uh, this values here. So let's uh, let's select uh, one and uh, one point one four. Come on. Next, let's select uh, forty five point. 72 and 71.17 comma then 60 because we want to find 60 percent of it so hit the enter button so this is the value for d60 so haven't find the value the d values i'm going to go ahead and plot d values on the on the graph so in order to plot this uh these lines on the graph we are going to start 
with the origin, which is uh, 0 0.1, which is here. So I want to draw a line that we extend from, that is for the data, a line that we extend from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4583. So 0 0.455A3 is going to be somewhere around here. So we already have the point where it is going to extend to, which is the value for data. So we're going to type in 0 0.455A3. Along the y-axis, the value is going to remain at uh, 10%. So 10% is, uh, is in the middle here, somewhere here. So because it's not going to change position, we're going to type in 10, and then 10. So let's click on the graph. In order to plot the line from from here, 0 0.1 to 0 0.045. Let's click on the graph. Uh, choose to select data. So as you can see, we have this uh, little window here that popped up. We're going to choose uh, add. So. We are going to select the X values and uh, the Y values. So just leave this place blank. So let's uh, select the X values, which is in this case is uh, 0 0.1 and uh, 0 0.45. So select it. So this simply means that uh, the line is going to stretch from this point 0 0.1 to 0 0.45. So for the y values, let's uh, remove this. We are going to select 10, 10. So it's going to remain at 10. So as you can see, it has appeared. So this is it. So the line is 10 from 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. Five. So click on OK. OK. So next, so I want to draw a line that will extend from, let me show you. So the line is going to extend from here down to this point. So in order to do that, we're going to copy this. Paste it here, copy it, paste it again. So the reason why we are going to copy and paste it because along the X axis, uh, the line is going to remain at 0.05. This point is not going to change. But along the Y axis, is going to extend from 0 to 10. So it's going to extend from here to here. So we're going to write, uh, type in 0 to 10. So let's go ahead and plot this line here. Click on the graph, then choose select data, choose add. Remember to leave this blank, then go to X values. Then select the X value, which is uh, 0.45. So as you can see, 0.45 and uh, comma 0.45, because uh, it's going to remain this in the same position along the X axis. But along the Y axis, is going to change. So we select for the Y axis 0, comma 10, because it's going to extend from 0 to 10. So if you click on OK, so as you can see, the line here has appeared. 
We're going to change the color of the plotted lines to black. Change this to black. Then we're going to choose a dash for the dash type. And uh, let's uh, choose a uh, begin our type. So we're going to change this one too to, to dark. And uh, we're going to choose uh, dash. And then we're going to choose a uh, and our type. So this is for D10. Okay. So next we're going to plot uh, the line for D30 on the graph. So in similar vein, we are going to plot it by, by standard line from 0 0.1 to 0 0.7552. Uh, so to plot the horizontal line, let's type in 0. One, because it's going to extend from 0 0.1 to 0 0.752.3. That's what we have uh, here. So, but uh, along the, the y-axis, it's going to remain at 30% position. So, 30. So, so quickly, let's plot the horizontal line by clicking on the graph, then choose select, go to add, add uh, X values, which is this, and then remove this, then add the Y values, which is this, and click OK. Okay, so as you can see, the line from uh, 0 0.1 to 0 0.752 is visible. So next, we're going to plot the line from uh, 0, 0 to 30. So it's going to extend from 0 to 30 along the y-axis. So similarly, this, let's simply copy this let's paste it here copy uh, paste it here again so because uh, it's going to extend from 0 to 30 we're going to type in 0 to 30 so let's plot it, click on the graph, choose select data, add, select X values, just this, and select uh, Y values, just this, then click on OK. So as you can see, OK, the line has appeared. So we're going to change it to back, uh, black color. So let's click on the line. So this is the line for D30 along the X axis. So next we're going to plot the line for D60. So the D60 value is 1.224. So we're going to do the same thing. So the line is going to extend from 0 0.1 to 1.2. So which is this is this here. So it's going to extend from here to here and then down to this place. So 1.224. 
First, we're going to draw the horizontal line along the x-axis, which is which is going to extend from 0 0.1 to 1.22444. But uh, along the along the the uh, the y-axis is going to remain at uh, 60. So we're going to type in 60. 60. So let's uh, plot it. Click on the graph. Check select data. Choose add. So let's choose our x values. X. Remove the x. Choose the y values. OK. OK. So as you can see, the, the line has appeared. Here, so we we're going to plot for the the line along the y axis from here to here. So it's going to extend from zero to sixty. So we're going to copy the values here. So. Because the line is going to extend from 0 to 60, we're going to type in 0, 60. So to plot the line, click on the graph, just select data, choose add. For the x values, we're going to select this. Then for the y values, remove it and uh, Select this zero and sixty, then choose OK. OK, so as you can see, the line has appeared. So that means we're going to change the color to black. Black dash type to dash. Then we're going to add arrow, which is and arrow. Black dash begin arrow. So let's label this. Go to insert text box. Let's, let's label this. We'll increase the font size for this. Let's also change. Old routine. So this is the similar graph for this data. So next I'm going to show you how to calculate hydraulic conductivity using D10 value. The D10 value as we have here is 0 0.45583. So let's go back to the equation. So from the equation, we have 1C given the average grain size coefficient as 100, as 100, and the weight of the sample as 350 gram, determine the hydraulic conductivity. So in order to find the hydraulic conductivity, we are going to use uh, this formula, K, which is hydraulic conductivity is equal to 
C, which is the coefficient of the grain size, open bracket, D10, So from the equation, the, the value for the uh, grain size coefficient is given as 100. So C, which is grain size coefficient, is given to us as uh, 100. Why the, the value for D10, as we have uh, extrapolated from the graph, is 0.45583. So we have D10, which is the effective grain size. Zero point four five five. So let's put in the values into the formula to find K. So we have K. Remember that D10 is in uh, millimeters. So we're going to convert D10 to centimeters because the unit for hydraulic connectivity is as the unit for K is centimeters per second. So all the all our calcul calculations is going to be in centimeters. So K is equal to 100 close bracket, so 0 0.455, 45583 divided by 10. So we divide it by 10 because we want to convert it to centimeters so the square. So let's use our calculator to, to divide 0.455, a tray by 10. So we have 100 times 0 0.04, five, five, eight, three. So let's square it. So if you square it, we have uh, 0 0.002078. Eight zero nine. So let's uh, approximate it to to eight one. So let's multiply it by by hundred. So if you multiply by hundred, we have zero point two zero seven seven eight. But there's the answer. We can also write it in standard form as so. This is the the estimation of the hydraulic conductivity.